Hi everybody, it's Ariel Warren, registered dietitian nutritionist, certified diabetes care and education specialist, and I've had type 1 diabetes for over 28 years now. And I've also been on the different pumps for about 20 years, and I'm certified with all of the pumps, Medtronic, Omnipod, and Tandem. So today we're going to go over Tandem in more detail. We're going to go over Control IQ. So this is a great refresher for people who are already on Control IQ using this pump or people who are thinking about switching to Tandem with Control IQ. So a huge difference with Control IQ versus auto mode systems with Medtronic or the Omnipod 5 that's coming out. Control IQ uses your current personal profiles even during its auto mode, which is Control IQ. Maybe the basils were working initially with Medtronic and Omnipod, but with Tandem, it continually uses those program settings. And if your blood sugar is predicted to stay between 112.5 and 160, then it's going to continue to deliver your program basal rate. With Control IQ, the program settings that make a difference with the system is your basal rate, your correction factor, and your carb ratio. With your basal rate, the higher the number, the more aggressive the pump's gonna be, the more insulin it's gonna be giving you in the background. With your correction factor, the lower the number, the more aggressive it's gonna be along with the carb ratio. The lower the number, the more aggressive it's gonna be. So the correction factor, which is the same as insulin sensitivity factor if you're moving from Medtronic, that means one unit is bringing your blood sugar this many milligrams per deciliters down. So let's say that your correction factor is one to 50, and your blood sugar is 150, your target is 100, then that means that the pump will give you one unit in a manual bolus to bring you from 150 down to 100. However, if you want a more aggressive correction factor, then you would lower that number. Instead of one to 50, do a one to 45, one to 40, and of course, always work with your doctor or your diabetes educator while making these adjustments. Carb ratio is very similar. It's one unit for every this many grams of carbohydrate. I like to put this in sandwich terms. So let's say you're eating a sandwich, two pieces of bread, a little bit of extra stuff. So I would say a normal sandwich is about 35 grams of carbohydrates. So if you had a one to 15, that's just over two units if you had that carb ratio. However, if you had a carb ratio of a one to 10, then that would give you a little over three units or actually it'd give you three and a half units. The higher the basal, the more aggressive, but the lower the correction factor and the carb ratio, the more aggressive the pump's gonna be. So with Control IQ, the pump isn't looking at where your blood sugar is right now, but where it's predicted to go in the next 30 minutes. So if you're predicted to stay between 112.5 and 160, then the pump is going to use your program basal until you're going too high or too low. So if you were staying between 112.5 and 160 all day, then it would just use your program basal. When you're using the program basal, you'll just see a regular gray diamond in the upper left-hand corner. That little gray diamond also tells you that control IQ is on. So now let's say your blood sugar is predicted to go above 160. That's when the pump is gonna start increasing your basal and it uses your correction factor to know how aggressively to adjust your basal. Now let's say you're predicted to go above 180. It's going to increase your basal and deliver an automatic correction bolus every 60 minutes and it uses 60% of your calculated correction. You can do a manual bolus anytime, but whenever you do a manual bolus, the pump is then gonna wait 60 minutes before it does that automatic correction bolus. If the pump predicts that you're not coming below 200 in the next 30 minutes, you'll get an alert saying that hey, your blood sugar is predicted not to come back down and it will prompt you to do a manual bolus. At this time is a great time to check your infusion set and your tubing, double check if something may have happened to your insulin because the pump is saying, hey, I'm working here to get your blood sugar down, but there's something wrong, it's not coming back down. If this happens frequently and you see a pattern of this, even as you've changed your infusion sets, then that shows it's more settings related. So on the flip side with Control IQ, if you were predicted to go below 112.5 within the next 30 minutes, it's going to decrease your basal. And again, it's using that correction factor to know how much to reduce that basal. And then if you're predicted to go below 70, it's gonna completely suspend your basal until your blood sugar is predicted to come back up, and then it will automatically re resume your basal, which is a beautiful thing because I don't know if you're like me, but back in the day with the caveman pumps, you see your blood sugar going down, you turn your pump off, and then you forget to turn it back on, and then your blood sugar's high, and you know why, so. 
The two settings Control IQ does not use is your target blood glucose and your insulin duration. Yes, you can set your target blood glucose and your insulin duration before you turn Control IQ on, but once you turn Control IQ on, target is always 110 and your insulin duration is always 5 hours. 5 hours may seem like a long time, but think of a bell curve graph when you think of insulin absorption. After rapid acting insulin has been administered, it takes about 5 to 15 minutes for it to start working in your body, known as the onset. Peak efficacy is between 1 to 2 hours and full duration lasts as long as 4 to 6 hours. So while the average person, most rapid acting insulin has been absorbed by hour 3, there is still residual insulin at play and by keeping track of rapid acting insulin for the full 5 hours, Control IQ helps reduce insulin from stacking and causing unforeseen low blood sugar events. So that's it for today. Hopefully you've learned something new. If you want to work with me directly, I can work as your diabetes educator. You can connect with me through my website at AboveDiabetes.com. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.